Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for some third and fourth place matchup. These guys were like rearing to go. <laughs> yeah, ready I, to go. These two are fierce competitors. Yeah, ready to get back to it. And so Sapo uh, with the band in place means he's going to be piloting his priest, warrior, and hunter up against Felzax, hunter, demon hunter, and paladin. Yes, interesting. Uh, and if you guys remember, Felzak is the one who uh, really, really loves those Draconid Crushers. So expect to see those those payoffs, uh, or payoffs in the form of those from Felzak's decks. Right, so much so that he chose, if he he tried to play as a Draconid Crusher himself. <laughs> and, he did, that's true. That is his uh, his uh, his Ready Player One avatar. That's right. <laughs> uh, although this is certainly going to be probably a higher quality match than uh, Ready Player One. Oh, eat it, Spielberg. Yeah, I'm coming after you, Spielberg. <laughs> this is a stream, we're taking you down. Yeah. <laughs> no rules, this is, the, uh, this is pop or pop off after dark, baby. That's right, no rules, just right. Yeah, no rules, just right. All yeah. anti Spielberg. Yeah, is is it in you? I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we see him taking out the uh, Dwarven Sharpshooter, recognizing, yeah, that that is a threat. That is a thing that has been doing some serious work. I mean, oh, but we see the second Dwarven Sharpshooter. Yeah, and you were talking a little bit about how these players are raring to go. We have played the first three turns at a furious pace. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, I'm not really sure what to expect on the uh, on this priest side. How it's going to react to a what appears to be a pretty, pretty. I don't want to say face hunter, but definitely an aggressive hunter for sure. Yeah, definitely looking to close out the game Ooh! around turn. Oh wow, this is Could another Leoc. <laughs> it's the fourth Leoc, fourth time that Animal Companion has been used, and it's the fourth time it's been Leoc. Wow, amazing! Absolutely fuck wild, unprecedented. The most electrifying event in Hearthstone Entertainment history. <laughs> He's got a family. <laughs> My God. <laughs> Don't do it, Leoc. <laughs> and oh man, Crackling Razor Maw. I mean, we've already seen how good Crackling Razor Maw can be. Handing out plus attack, handing out poisonous. And seven health doesn't yeah. matter if you're getting poisoned. That's true. I've always said that. That's often, right. uh, often loud and unprompted. <laughs> right, just sort of in the middle of the DMV. <laughs> just to really. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Seven health doesn't matter if you're poisoned. They're like, oh my. Yeah, and then the thing is, everyone's like, sir, and I was like, hey, everybody, did you think about it for a second? And they're like, well, no, good question. You could stay. Yeah. <laughs> Ever. It's the DMV. Think about it. Think, think about think it. Think about it. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah, so this Crackly Razor Maw looks like it's going to come out looking for probably that poisonous, Ooh. and it's going to find it! Oh, baby! I'm a little concerned. I hope Felzak didn't, like, hurt his... I hope he didn't, like, hurt his wrist with how fast he picked <laughs> that poisonous. Yeah. Oh my god, right? Like, we didn't even have... I couldn't even tell you what the other choices were. Yeah, something involving mutations. This is why I wish we had a slow-motion replay. <laughs> right, You never really need it, so it would be impractical to have planned for it, but really, it would be great to have that kind of thing. Add a, add a tape guy to the... Add a tape guy, yeah. I mean, if, we, if I got to pick one guy to add. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and man, Sappo all of a sudden finding finding himself a little bit uh, a little bit behind the eight ball here. He can develop another one of those shade quills, one of those four sevens that we just saw get uh, poisoned. But how does he move his own strategy fo forward? Well, I think what you do is you obviously throw out the silver to get a little taunt up there. But then, um, oh yeah, you divine him to uh, to get it up to full, just because the the uh, four health would not be good enough, or uh, five health uh, apparently is not good enough. Right, and just really trying to make it as un, as awkward as possible, making sure that uh, either a lot of damage has to get... The thing is, I mean, a lot of damage could potentially get spread around, but we see both Houndmaster and Kill Command available, and Unleash the Hounds, really, all of those. And, There's a lot of damage, a lot of damage here. Yeah, and the Sharpshooter is still alive. Yeah, not taking care of that... Really, the second Sharpshooter, I think, uh, is, uh, was really, really determinant of the tone of this match. Because getting rid of one sharpshooter, fine, all well and good. Um, you respect it, that's good. But having two sharpshooters that has put, I think right at this point, four to six damage on the board, that's just a lot from uh, a two drop here, or a one drop here. Yeah, and Sapo now really starting to look, oh, Breath of the Infinite on offer. That is awesome. Yeah, it lines that up is... a little awkwardly against all these three attack creatures, but man. But also and also, I don't think, I mean, not that it needs to right now. I just don't think that Sappho is running any dragons at the moment. But again, he doesn't need to. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, if, if you're one of the good things about your opponent keeping you off the board is all of a sudden your your Breath of the Infinite doesn't hurt your your creatures. 
That's true. That it, is true. In the words of John yeah, Madden, yeah. you have to have creatures for your creatures to take damage. You ain't got to worry about your creatures if you ain't got no creatures. That's right. That's right. All the time and thinking. Also something I say all the time loud and unprompted, just like <laughs> I'll be in Home Depot and say that. They'll be like, what? This is the garden section. Yeah, and this is going but, to set oh, Sapo to death. No, <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Woof. Felzak. Go ahead and well. make sure all my notes are correct. Felzak wins with his hunter. I have to say all this out loud. Apparently, I yeah, have yeah. I can I can accurately uh, switch stuff notes. for like for about three hours, and then it all just comes all the wheels come off. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> we're at we're at hour four or five right now. This has been a a long, hard fought tournament, and I've loved every second of it. Oh yeah, what a spectacular tournament! Thank you so much for for dude. I I, I don't a lot of people may not realize this who are watching, but ev uh, the Brando show administrated this entire tournament. Oh, well, this was a, a lot of fun, and, and a lot of people may not realize this, but Dollar Bills, all this high-quality production you're seeing, that is DB, my friend. So uh, make yourself a proud member of the Dollar Bills Nation today. <laughs> and, uh, if you're looking for something good to watch, might I recommend the Brando Show. Also, again, a special shout-out to our sponsor, Techno Dude, sweetening that pot for us, making sure we had uh, a sick cash prize for all of these lovely competitors. Yeah, that's right. And we pretty much wouldn't have a third place, a third fourth. We wouldn't have a third place prize without this Techno Dude. This match does not exist without Techno Dude, and therefore I am decreeing it the Techno Dude After Dark takedown. The Techno Dude takedown. Oh, yeah. It absolutely is brought to you by yeah. Techno Dude. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, it's not enough nope. that, that that the venue is named after him. The event must also be named after him. Yeah. All rules Thank just right, can't lose. Amen, Tori Wank. <laughs> Amen. All right, so this is our, our our second opportunity to actually see a demon hunter on the stream. Yeah. And this is you know this is actually when uh, I I don't know that I love the not banning of the demon hunter personally. But a lot of respect. Gonna... Yeah, a lot of respect for the rogue. I mean, you would talk about the two, rogue? two classes well, let's, that, yeah. Let, let's be honest, we didn't see any rogues at all, so maybe rogue was even nastier. Right. <laughs> so there's something about the rogue list that, and granted, they have access to a lot of really, like, hooked scimitar being a common, maybe is just in conjunction with Too stuff good? like sap and other, and other, some stealth mechanics, like. Well, not to mention that late game they have sprint. Uh, also, uh,. Uh, what's it? Tinker's or oil? Oh, Tinker's sharp sword oil. Yeah. Sharp sword oil. Thank you. Could not remember the name of that card for the life of me. But yeah, that card now, while uh, Hall of Fame card, is back and still as powerful as ever. There's a lot of really, really good rogue stuff at common, so I'm not quite surprised that he did end up banning it. Uh, surprised we didn't see any shaman representation. <laughs> Gotta be honest with you. Yeah, it seems like they. We definitely saw some people bring it to the earlier rounds, but it not yeah. not able to make it to this point. Whether because of, uh, yeah, and I guess we'll have, we we can only speculate as to why. But <laughs> the yeah, well, but, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just those random effects, right? Shaman has is loaded with them, and maybe they just didn't roll the right way. Could be. Uh, meanwhile, uh, so, and also there's some pretty small small uh, pool. So maybe you know next month or whatever when we do this again, we'll see more shaman representation. Could be. Maybe people will have uh, more refined lists. And we're actually seeing Sapo having to commit once again some of his removal or some of his uh, end game burst in order to as to play as removal. <laughs> in yeah, these, the in core these. currently. I mean, you're you got to expect to commit some of that, right? Um, but still. Certainly, yeah. Certainly, in a matchup like this, where both decks very much would like to take control of the board. Well, in an aggro warrior, unless every card is aggressive, right? Like warrior, the the one thing that Hearthstone does very differently than every other card game is it gives you a resource that you can just tap anytime in the form of the hero power and warriors is very very not aggressive at all so so you might have a harder time building an aggressive strategy around a warrior in this particular environment now that's not saying you can't do it it's just saying some of the the uh the free stuff and value that you get from other classes you don't get from warrior now he's sitting here i think thinking between the imprisoned ganarg and hero powering yeah, it looks like I'm actually going to take the hero power. And that, yeah, yeah. I think that's... it is it is definitely uh, the ability to, you know, armor up for two versus the ability to deal one damage for one. Uh, how those two stack up against each other is really interesting, especially when both decks are like high tempo board control, but also uh, slanting aggressive. Just because in a straight, you know, straight up moving into the late stages of the game, maybe when both decks are starting to run out of gas, uh, the, the possibility of the warrior to stretch it out is... Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, we've talked uh, several times about Felzak and his spirit animal card, the Draconid Crusher, 
Oh yeah, the, I love the Dragon and Crusher. I think the Dragon and Crusher is very, very clever. We have not seen him be the most useful uh, so far in this tournament series. However, I think we're we're gonna see uh, the dra the the lethality of the Crusher this uh, this round. And speaking of spirit animal cards, this is Sappo's spirit animal card right here. The uh, ship's yes, cannon. The ship's cannon. Yes. And uh, it's just just where he wants it to. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it's not really going to be enough. It's still going to, yeah, I'm sending that five straight to face. I think that's a good call. Heroic Should Strike also coming out to clear this 3 oh, tool, it looks like. Really? That is an Well, I, I guess you got to think, like, next turn you can throw the Arcanite Reaper out, and you can throw the Imprisoned Gnarg out, too. So, and it looks like you're probably going to need to. Yeah, actually, Arcanite Reaper, one of the few, but also very clean ways that Warrior can just go ahead and remove, that this particular uh, build of Warrior, short of the Executes, is going to uh, be able to... Yeah. Oh, Do man. You rip the Sky Raider first is a question. Yeah, there's a part of I me, mean, a very big part of me wants to just go ahead and kill this Cobalt Scalebane and then start shooting in hopes that you hit that. Hit yeah, the no, I, I think I, I think no matter what you hit the, uh, the, I think you play the Arcanite Reaper first and Maybe. kill the Cobalt Fiend. It, or, or potentially what you could do is you could, I mean, you could, I think this is not the best play, but you could oh, trade God, your, uh, you could trade your hook and your first mate into, oh, ooh, or you oh, could just, or you lucky. could just call and your shot. <laughs> yeah, just wrong. Yeah, just Babe Ruth. And you say whatever. R and Jesus is on my side. I pray to him every morning. I got a candle with his face on it. R and Jesus, he's me. <laughs> and uh, ripping the Captain Hook Tusk. Oh my gosh. Uh, which is insane. Here. Yeah, that is insane. That's gonna pull stuff like Shark Fin Fan, Parachute, uh, Parachute Brig, and it's gonna give them all rush. Also has one of my favorite on play voice lines in the game. When you play her, she says, Chia Ten, I never fight fear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she doesn't. She's right. Man, both of these decks so willing to spend their health so aggressively for board control. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, so, Dragon and Crasher is, and we're going to see a surrender. Uh, I'm, I'm, part of me is a little defeated because I really, really wanted to see that uh, that pirate hit the four. Uh, uh, to see the hook tusk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would love to see the hook tusk. Yeah. Really, it, really would love that for me, selfishly. That's right. Know? As a lover of games, <laughs> I would love but to see the hook tusk. Of, yeah. A lover of just vomiting stuff from your deck. <laughs> oh, I just broke my shin. Sorry, that thud was me breaking my own shin. Like a oh, fool. Oh, damn. Oh, and I just realized we're after hours, I can put my hat on backwards now. Zink! Yeah. Uh, well, you know what? The good thing about breaking your shin is that's why the Lord blessed you, blessed you with a second. That's right. I got a spare shin just in case this one breaks down. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All that's right. That's true. You got, two, you got two, like lungs. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, all right. One to one. It's going to be Priest versus Demon Hunter. Both decks that struggled initially. Now, given another chance. Uh, now, this uh, this Priest deck is... I'm, I'm curious if this Priest deck is going to be able to stabilize enough against this, uh, the Demon Hunter's aggro. My instincts are going to say no, that the aggro here is going to be just enough with the Outlast cards. Uh, and cards like uh, Glaive Bound. Actually, cards in his hand. Crimson Sigil Runner. Great. And let's see what he pulls on the the repeat. We get Chaos Strike, Scalebane, and the, the Crusher we all know and love. And he can throw that Battle Fiend out very, very safely on turn one if he wants to. Yeah, there's, uh, this particular list from Sappho is not playing the, the usual ways to remove that, something like a penance. Uh, instead, cutting that... Or even a, a Shadow Word, right? Uh, does have both Shadow Words, Pain and Death, but not not going to be playable until a little bit later on. Oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah, uh, this, it, I, I, this list, this Priest list does play a little bit harder to the board, so if, if Sappho can find... You know, yeah. we, we saw the efficacy of stuff like what? the Faceless Rager, able to well, the leverage the, is a, the health is of a other really, creatures. really 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 interesting uh play in this format because like that's a build around card right that's something you can do for very very efficient the problem i have with faceless rager right now is there's not a lot you can copy that comes into play before it right yeah so like generally much. if if you know in theory if you could slap down something that was like a one nine with faceless rager that had like can't attack or you know say mm -hmm. in theory that's when the faceless rager would be really really valuable but faceless rager a five you know, seven on turn five is good, just not not great. Yeah, but uh, this is one of the cards that can come out not not beforehand, but at least at a similar time. And between mm -hmm. the priest hero power and the possibility of finding stuff like uh, circle of healing, you know, potentially being able to uh, activate the ragers later on. But yeah, nothing. It's kind oh, of an awkward draw right I mean, now. Don't get me wrong; it's still a fine, fine card and a very interesting build around for this particular format. But 
uh, just not useful right now and uh, might not serve as useful in this particular matchup. Six attack. <laughs> the, yeah, the Illidan good. just built up Leave six it to attack. A demon hunter. Leave it to a demon hunter. Turn three. And uh, able to clear. Uh, that orc was overconfident. It just went down in a single smash. And also, uh, let's talk about one of these cards that I see in Sappho's hand. It's actually an unsleeping soul. I really actually like that. I just don't know what you're going to play it on is the problem. Yeah, sounds a friendly minion, summon a copy of it. There Now there I are guess... some high health things in here, you know, especially like the Hench Clan Shade Quill with, the, right. with that seven health line. That four seven. Yeah, I think that's pretty much why it's there. Um, but is that good enough to just, I mean, it's good to have a two silence versions of that for sure. But again, much like the, the, the Faceless Ranger, is it good enough? And Divine Spirit is actually going to enable this this Radiant Elemental to survive all the attacks visible on board. And we did see Fezlak, Fezlak no, Felzak, have to commit several cards to be able to just remove that orc, right? Of several, mm -hmm. uh, several cards committed. So maybe this yeah. six makes it. Well, so the thing about uh, the thing about Demon Hunters is it actually fills a role that, um, ooh, and that is gonna go ahead and give him the scale bane. I have to imagine he's gonna embrace darkness on that scale bane. Uh, the oh yeah, choose an enemy minion to try to yeah the, the, and, you, and you get it yeah. That's right. The the single target eventual mind control. That's a. I mean, that's just about as good as it gets. Though the battle rager, the faceless rager, as a five six, pretty good as well. Uh, I just personally like it at a discount. You get 2-6 into that 4-2 for some nice value there. Oh, yeah, and still able to leverage your hero power as well to keep that keep right. that Radiant Elemental on the board. Radiant Elemental is one of those cards that might as well have taunt. It's so yeah. important to remove. Oh, absolutely. You're like, eh, 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 eh. No way, Jose. <laughs> and uh, I think we're going to probably see him uh, lose this Radiant Elemental thanks to this scale bane. Yep, there it goes. Uh, but this 5-6 is still a threat that is going to need to be dealt with. Yeah, and based on uh, Felzak's previous play, I wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, a creature get played and then this this rager just ignored. <laughs> and, uh... well, here, here's the problem with Embrace Darkness right now is um, is that no matter what he embraces darkness is, because he has a good creature, a big creature on the board, who boy, mm, that 7-3 just became a whole lot uh, nastier. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, no matter because what he, he has steals, a big creature. It's, yeah, it's going to get value it's just gonna get. It's just gonna get rammed into, uh, rammed into Faces Rager. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And so now that's, and you were just talking about the attack line of that seven three uh, piloted shredder. Uh, yeah, I mean, at this point, do you have to do stuff like commit combo tools? Like, for example, this inner fire can be used to set that back to three three. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair point, actually. But I, I don't know that it's because you're saying. Because you're throwing the uh, the Embrace Darkness on, it basically says, hey, kill me, or your opponent gets it. You know, like, I don't know what Reverse Taunt is. Right. <laughs> the, I, don't, I don't know that that's a, a thing that exists, but whatever that is, that's what it is. It's like the this thing has, ram shield effect. Yeah, it has to attack. Oh, yeah, it's like a like a goblin prank. <laughs> yeah, but by throwing, it, by throwing it on 7-3, this thing is like, oh, I have to attack into the 5-1. That's just my play. That's going to be the best play. Because seven damage to face is good, but I don't want my opponent to be able to deal seven damage to face to me. Yeah, and it's really a shame because Felzak would love to send all this I face and play out his huge Draconid Crusher because that would actually exactly. get Sapo down to below that crucial 15 oh, health. Oh, maybe he's going to do it. Do it? Uh, wow. I mean, that that would be brave. But then again, if you... You got to be you, brave. Yeah, if you think that you need to win in the short term and that if the game goes long, sure. it's not in your favor. Yeah, here we go. There we go. Uh, and I'll say... I actually think this is a better play, just because unless he top decks in Tomb or something like that, that 9-9 is very, very difficult to deal with. Yeah, that's right. I mean, even with a 7-3, you're still short. Oh, he can silence it, though. He can silence it now. That's a good top deck. Yeah, finally going to be able to control the... Uh, going to be able to remove the Dragon and Crusher. Doesn't really move his own... Uh, the only way he can really move his own board forward is to develop the Shade Quill, so I would assume we're going to see uh, that come I down as well. Yeah, I think that, but then I think that'll get ignored largely until next turn, because who's expecting the Unsleeping Soul? Yeah, yeah, if, uh, if Felzak had the opportunity. I guess they did have a little bit of time to review each other's deck list, so maybe Felzak is thinking about the True. possibility. But, but then again, I mean, Unsleeping Soul. Uh, also, uh, Sappho needs to make sure that he can't get blown out by something like those Glaivebound adepts we saw at the beginning of the game in the opening hand. Right, absolutely. Those Glaivebound adepts are going to be... Are, are actually really great. Uh, I again, not a card I think we've seen in a lot of the the Demon Hunter builds, but but very very cool, very sly, and I think that's a, a thing that you can do, um, particularly in formats like this, 
in tournaments pretty much exclusively like this that are, uh, you know, you don't exactly know every deck, just swapping up two to four cards in the standard build. Inner firing that. That is not what I was expecting. Interesting. So here comes that silence we were just talking about to go ahead and yeah. take care of that Draconid Crusher, but then... Oh, oh that, the Pilot Shredder can't attack. It has summoning sickness. Uh, oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Interesting. And we're going to go ahead and see. Is it going to grab the Gladebound Adept? Piloted Shredder or Twin Slice. Is there any way... I, uh, so Gladebound Adept can't come down until next turn, but he can develop... Because, uh, uh -huh. you know, he still needs to draw it, and also he doesn't have enough mana. But, like, Umberwing Hero Power... Uh, sorry, Umberwing... He can play his... Almost his entire hand, if he wants to. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and and it's just setting up for that burst. Um, I probably would have played the Lonely... Well, no, I guess not, because he won the, the Felwing, but still just going to go face here, just trying to set him and make him as, as ill-prepared as possible. And it, <laughs> I don't see a way he's going to be able to deal with this right now. Yeah, he needs a huge uh, heal for himself. Uh, that's yeah, not going to do it. Yeah, he's not going to do it. No, that's the heal. That's the opposite. Yeah, if he, he needs to figure out some way to... Give Felzak that card and then destroy it somehow. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. I I don't I, I don't know. An Acropolis is not really what you want. That's not the uh, you know. I, I honestly I don't even know what two drop would have saved him. Maybe a Noyotron. Maybe. Oh yeah, the some sort of a Noyo situation. But yeah, I mean Sapo's doing the math right now, trying to figure out if there's any way that he can. If there's a, some sort of fancy way that he can survive, he can heal himself to five, but the amount of damage that's showing. I'm not real is great eight. at math, but that is, yeah, that is definitely more than five. It is yep. And that's going to uh, do it. And Felzak is taking the Demon Hunter. All right, so one more. And this priest having a hard time yeah. right now. Yeah, I think you got to not play this priest next. Just, um, I mean, you're going to eventually have to win with it, right? But just like in the meantime. And so that means it's going to be, uh, so Felzak has two chances now to win with his Paladin, if I'm not mistaken. And this is the Paladin that we saw that was Correct. Uh, quite quite mech as well, featuring the, you know, the Glowtrons, but also featuring the Sand Breaths yeah. to try to it's a, it's key a, off it's of... A, it's a, hmm? a different shade of mech Paladin than, uh, than our friend uh, Sapo is running. Or, yeah. I'm sorry, no. Yeah, yeah, than our friend... Um, Wait, who was running in the finals? Wasn't somebody running that? Apollo? No. It was a tack tacklet. Tacklet. Sorry. Yes. A different. Uh, sorry, I was looking at our roster here and trying to trying to figure out who that was. But yeah, it's a di it's a different flavor, and again, it features the Draconid Crusher, which has not been as effective as I would have predicted. But again, I still can't help but really like that. It's just I feel the matchups have been not kind to the Draconid Crusher. Yeah, I've been having a hard time. And anytime you see an antique heal bot, that's uh that's bad. So for the for the crusher, I mean. Uh, and so now we're gonna be coming in for so this particular hunter is the oh yeah that's right this is the mech hunter uh, mm -hmm. construction from Sapo featuring gyrocopter or Eurocopter at the at the very oh. top end. I love the addition of quick shot here. I think that, that card, particularly in an aggressive build like uh, this, this uh, mech hunter wants to be, quick shot is a really great way to just kind of do some stuff and then cantrip into another card and possibly get some more board threat. Yeah, and it's not even a disaster if you don't get the cantrip. Like just two yeah. mana deal three is is okay. It's not not <laughs> not too not too shabby. Yeah. And it can go face. That's one of the that's one of the cards that is absolutely face targetable if you if you need this. But man, and he really wanted to keep that divine shield on that guy, but ooh, I hate to see it. Yeah, both of these lists are going to be spending a lot of time making sure that the other player is not on the board. <laughs> yeah. go. Honestly, Felzak getting a, getting ahead here is, is going to be pretty big. I have a hard time. I mean, it's turn two, right? So I can't speak too too generally. I can't paint with too broad of brush strokes, but man. This 4-6 is going to be very hard to deal with. Yeah, there's, uh, Sapo's going to need some very specific cards. He is running a couple of things that can help him out. Hunter's Mark, Venomizer are yeah, a couple oh, of yeah, things yeah. that can help him out. But yeah, he, none of those are in the hand right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And that's kind of what I'm looking at, right? It's like even next turn. Uh, still, basically, whatever you put down that's going to deal with it, say Venomizer, right? He draws a Venomizer here. He plays it on turn four. Still can't do anything about it until turn five. Right. So he's going to try... And very difficult. He knew he really. If he wants to use the Venomizer for board control, he's really gonna hope that he can attach it to something that's been able to survive. Not gonna pull a Venomizer, but he is gonna pull a Bronze Gatekeeper, which is just again too little, too late. But he could quick shot 
the four three here, which seems decent. Yeah, actually, we have the the possibility of quick shotting. Gosh, just the, I I really it's a shame to spend two mana hero powering. But when are yeah. you, when else are you going to get the opportunity? You don't uh, obviously not knowing what it, what is in Felzak's hand. We know that Felzak would have to draw something like hand of a doll, sand breath, something like that. Mm-hmm. But if you're a Sappho, can you take that chance that none of the cards in the hand right now <laughs> are yeah, more right. here? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Uh, and I think it would be the the smart play to get rid of Shield of Minibot just because you're already a little behind. And like you said, War Gear would make that a, what, 9-8? Uh, yeah. And a 9-8, if I'm doing my math right, way harder to deal with than a 4-3. Yeah. Way harder. <laughs> it's a, a, a solid, uh, like, and I'm trying to imagine what a War Gear welded on the outside of a shielded mini bot looks like, because it's already shielded. So it's like armor on top of armor around that's got a force field. It's like a Starship Enterprise. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, that is an uh, aft metaphor, yeah. So we're going to quick shot away the 4-3. Going to ping that fella in the face and uh, leave the the big old mole, or small mole, I guess. I don't know. He's, he's big He's big for a mole. Certainly big for a mole. Three health is more health than I'm used to moles having. For... <laughs> and so now, turn five. Uh, Sappho has not taken much damage, so doesn't need to commit anything like the antique healed bar. Just going to no, play with the think... piloted shredder. I think Shredder right here in the value play is probably the best, most proactive play he can make uh, at the moment, not knowing, of course, True Silver is awaiting to uh, to just donk that pilot Shredder, unfortunately. But yeah. still, it's it's a sticky minion, right? That's the best play. And getting a... Uh, that's the, actually pretty The neat. fallen hero. That means the, the hero power deals three now. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> uh, well, you know, what, what, a, what a great hypothetical we had here for a second. And now this is, again, kind of an awkward play for Sappo because uh, he's got a lot of really great five-cost things, but nothing, say, four-cost that he could then hero power with or, you know, nothing he could then staple the war gear to. Yeah, I mean, it's right just, now... It's it's just awkward is what it is. His biggest play onto the board is a Venomizer-Bronze Gatekeeper combination. But and... that seems not so good because it could just be dealt with uh, with uh, the True Silver and the Pilot Shredder, which the Pilot Shredder would then just poop out another minion. Oh, for sure. But, but I mean, how, how desperate is our... I mean, there's also the possibility of just playing out of War Gear, which dies to even less via a single True Silver swing as well as a, a Beaming Sidekick. Mm-hmm. We'll take care of that. Or, or I mean, there's the very bold position of just holding. Oh yeah, the the Dune one. I believe it was uh, 2014 World Hearthstone Champion Firebat who said one of the most difficult plays in Hearthstone can be knowing when nothing. to do nothing. Yeah, and I think here might be one of those times. I mean, obviously you're looking down, not no board, but realistically you have a weapon. He's not probably going to use on your face. Oh, we're just seeing the yeah the venomized bronze gatekeeper. Just gonna go I'm ahead sure. and any any attacks into this. I mean, it, it'll at least take the four attack off the board. Shot bot the draw, but and the actually, thing is, blessing of kings is going to potentially make it so that he doesn't even have to spend his sword if he doesn't want to. No, well, I think he's gonna want to just simply because this thing has poison and he'll have to waste you know whatever thing he would staple blessing of kings to. True. Um, and then scalebane, of course, can come out. And oh, getting grand mummy off the shredder is nuts. <laughs> that is really good for a deck that's trying to be boards playing a board centric game. That being said, Eurocopter is uh, very good. Yeah, I'm, Rush wins. I know. I still think holding out could have been better, simply because, I mean, you do have the heal bot, right? So any damage you would have taken last turn would have been pretty much just null and void because of the heal bot. And then. Right, and so he would have had now, to, I mean, Sappa would have had to wait a couple of turns, but he potentially could have comboed the, the gyrocopter with the Venomizer. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That, that would have been just tasty. And, but, or honestly, even the gyrocopter with uh, with the shield guy, the shield fella, would have been pretty good too, because oh, yeah. stapling five extra health onto uh, a Wind Fury Rush man, not too bad. So and, pretty... and an extra attack. There's a pretty good chance he's going to be dead by turn nine. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, there's that too. There is also that. Uh, so it looks like we're going to see the True Silver Champion come down to deal with the rest and, of this war gear. And this is yeah. one of those situations where it's just, we can see the inverted pendulum, right? Like, as the board-centric deck is able to take control of more and more in the board, it becomes nigh insurmountable for the other board control deck that has lost control yeah. of the board. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I experimented a lot when we were making decks with, uh, well, not a lot, the, the matchups we played. I tried Tinker Town Technician a lot. And I just found them to not be 
as good as I want him to be. But maybe maybe Sappa will find some more use that I did not hear. Whirling Blades actually works great with the Gyrocopter. So if yeah, we, that's true. Yeah, if we find ourselves, how much damage is this? Uh, Five, seven, seven uh, nine. Oh, jeez, sixteen, seventeen. Twenty-five. This is lethal yeah, damage. <laughs> well, that's a GG. Dang, and boy, and when uh, we haven't—I feel like we haven't really gotten the chance to really see this Mech Paladin hit quite like no, this. No, I'm so happy because Mech Paladin was one of the absolute uh, coolest decks I saw on our tournament bracket. Yeah. And that will put uh, Felzak to our official third place of the first popper pop-off.